Welcome in to the Fun Astrology and Merriman Market Analyst Saturday Financial Podcast. I'm Thomas Miller. Thank you so much for being here this weekend. We read the free weekly newsletter that's published every Friday evening on MMACycles.com by financial analyst and astrologer Ray Merriman. This week's newsletter is especially poignant because of what happened in the markets this past week, the announcement on Friday by Federal Chairman Jerome Powell, and a special section at the end that you're going to want to hang for, where Ray takes a positive spin on some upcoming aspects. This is being released on August 24th for the week, the market week, beginning August 26th. And first of all, a quote from CNBC.com from Friday. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell laid the groundwork Friday for interest rate cuts ahead, though he declined to provide exact indications on timing or extent. He said the time has come for policy to adjust. Now Ray's commentary this week. Global equity prices continued their mercury retrograde rally into last week's three-star geocosmic critical reversal date of August 16th to 19th with several making new recovery highs late in the week. As reported in three special stock market update reports this week to subscribers, the strong two-week rally following the low of August 5th, when Mercury retrograde began, is not only unusual, but confirms August 5th as the primary cycle low. It also looks like a greater 50-week cycle trough for rallies of this magnitude tend to happen only after longer-term cycles begin. Thus, there is the need for special updates and revisions of our prior trading strategies with a new outlook for the next few weeks. In Asia and the Pacific Rim, equity markets exhibited interesting divergences. The Australian ASX, Japan's Nikkei, and India's Nifty indices all displayed strong rallies into late last week. The Nifty and ASX tested their recent all-time highs. The Hang Seng of Hong Kong also had a rally, but much weaker than the aforementioned indices. And China's Shanghai Composite actually fell to a double bottom and back to its lowest level in six months. All is not well in China, as it is behaving as the weakest of all of the major global stock markets. This may be a drag on the world economy soon if conditions in China don't improve. European indices all had decent rallies last week. Most notable were the indices of Germany and Switzerland, which are forming double and triple tops to yearly highs. The recovery in the Netherlands' AEX has only been corrective so far. London's FTSE had a better-than-average rally, but the excitement was greater in Germany and Switzerland. In the Americas, Brazil's Bovespa soared to new all-time high on August 21st, The U.S. markets were also strong, but, as of yet, have not made new all-time highs. They are close, and with Uranus about to turn retrograde, they could explode and do so soon, since Uranus loves to break any long-term support or resistance zones, such as previous all-time highs. In other markets, gold was a stellar performer, rallying to another new all-time high of 2570 on August 20th, right into MMA's three-star critical reversal date zone of August 19th. Silver had a good rally, too, testing $30 again on August 20th, but well off its yearly high of $32.75 made back in May 20th, another MMA three-star critical reversal date. Thus, there is still a case of intermarket bearish divergence between gold and silver as gold approaches the time band when its 50-week cycle low will be due. Potentially profitable trading opportunities may be arising in both gold and soybeans as the last week's powerful geocosmic combinations coincided with a new all-time high in gold and a new three-and-a-half-year low in soybeans. Bitcoin and Ethereum were flat until Friday, trading within the range of the previous week's high and low. However, following Fed Chairman Powell's welcomed announcement of impending interest rate cuts, Bitcoin broke above 63000 and out of congestion. With Uranus and Mercury about to change directions, we could see Bitcoin and Ethereum make a surprise approach to new all-time highs shortly, too, as long as Bitcoin can stay above 63000 Crude oil fell to a new all-time five-month low of 71.46 last week on August 21st, 
Again, this was within the MMA geocosmic time band for a big reversal from August 16th to 19th, which could yet indicate a primary cycle trough and a sharp multi-week rally has begun. And that's it for the review section. Now the short-term geocosmics. A quote from the Wall Street Journal from Thursday. Independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s anticipated exit from the presidential race could benefit Donald Trump. With Kennedy and other alternative candidates off the ballot, half of the voters backing them would support Trump and a quarter would back Harris, the late July poll found. Harris's one-point lead with Kennedy in the race turned into a two-point deficit without him. The Democratic Party and affiliated groups invested heavily in blocking Kennedy from state ballots and highlighting his eccentricities to voters. Ray's thoughts now on the short-term geocosmics. He says last week's powerful mutables and fixed T-squares involving Uranus, the full moon, and Saturn with Venus, Mars, and Jupiter coincided with a major volcanic eruption in Iceland. It also coincided with a stunning switch in the dynamics of the U.S. presidential election with Robert Kennedy's announcement that his run as an independent candidate would end as he joined forces with Republican candidate Donald Trump after Kennedy was deliberately obstructed from participating as a viable candidate by the Democratic Party. That behavior may end up being costly for the Democrats and Kamala Harris in a tight election. Furthermore, last week's powerful geocosmic combinations coincided with new all-time high in gold and a new three-and-a-half-year low in soybeans. Potentially profitable trading opportunities may be arising in each. Threats from nature and in the realm of world economies and national politics are not over given the onslaught of geocosmic signatures yet to come. First, we find Uranus changing directions on September 1st, the same day that Pluto retrogrades back into Capricorn until November 20th, for the last time in about 240 years. Uranus's changing direction is always a wild card for financial markets and natural events, such as high winds, tornadoes, hurricanes, electrical blackouts, and earthquakes. At the same time, Pluto is highlighted as having symbolic associations with volcanic eruptions. Together, they can represent threats to growing conditions, especially in areas where crops are well into their growth cycle and may even be ready for harvest. This might add to the reasons why soybean and other grain prices are getting attractive. At the same time, we are under a retrograde semi-square from Saturn to Pluto, the first one-eighth harmonic aspect following their conjunction in mid-January 2020 when, one, COVID broke out, and second, Iranian General Qasem Soleimani was assassinated by the U.S. The first one-eighth of a cycle is when the themes that were present under the conjunction return. Additionally, Saturn, in a hard aspect to Pluto, also represents a threat to crops through acts of nature, such as extreme temperatures, dryness, high winds, or floods. The latter may also be highlighted September 1st through the 12th, when Mars squares Neptune, September 3rd indicating heavy rains, followed by the Sun in opposition to Saturn and square Jupiter, September 8th through 12th indicating geopolitical threats and possibly endangering the safety of political leaders since it activates the Saturn-Pluto semi-square. It will be an interesting time for the first debate between Trump and Harris. However, we also note that transiting Mars will trine the New York Stock Exchange's Jupiter and Neptune now through next week. This has a bullish bias for U.S. stocks on its own. And now, the longer-term thoughts, a very interesting section. First of all, a quote from the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal on Friday. Mr. Trump has let Ms. Harris claim the mantle of change, though she has been Mr. Biden's sidekick all along. This is political malpractice. He has also given Ms. Harris the chance to sound the notes of optimism that Americans always want to hear from a candidate. Mr. Trump focuses so much on America's problems, American carnage, 
that Miss Harris can dominate the field even with generalities like hope and opportunity. Then this quote from André Barbeau, the book Planetary Cycles, Mundane Astrology, translated by Kate Johnson from the Astrological Association, back in 2016, just a few years before the legendary astrologer passed away. He says the next conjunction of Saturn-Neptune of 2026 is centrally placed at the beginning of Aries and in a triangular quartet of planets with a double sextile to a trine between Uranus in Gemini and Pluto in Aquarius. It is the most benefic configuration of the century, and its interplanetary partnership will work for the best in a splendid relaunch of civilization, end quote. Now, Ray's comments. He says, this is the time of year when I start writing the annual forecast book. After studying the cosmic lineup for 2025, two words come to mind that expresses a common American refrain. Holy, well, in the second word, we won't repeat here. <laughs> in other words, this is big. The planetary setups in 2025 symbolize a huge opportunity and danger regarding the direction the world will take. It's not a cliché for astrologers to think the future of the world is about to change dramatically. It could be very hard, but it can just as easily be the beginning of something extremely constructive. I'm going to drink some of that Kool-Aid and project thoughts on why I think it could be the start of something very positive for the world and the start of a new and constructive direction for humankind. We already know that 2025 will be the start of the Aries Vortex, lasting into 2027, as outlined in recent webinars and interviews along with this past year's forecast book. This is when Saturn and Neptune, a 36-year cycle, can join at the midpoint of Uranus and Pluto. The latter two planets will be in a harmonious trine aspect in early air signs, and it all funnels into zero degrees Aries, the world point. You could take any one of these cosmic signatures and write a book about their importance. Earlier, I used the word holy because of Neptune, the planet of the spiritual path that rewards a life of virtue and compassion. With Saturn, it is also a path of commitment and discipline. Saturn rules authority government, and its leaders. However, with Neptune, it can also symbolize spiritual authority and mastery, as in behaving with a consciousness about spiritual values and exhibiting virtuous acts when positive. When negative, it symbolizes corruption and the willingness to manipulate and deceive others. Just as important and powerful, the midpoint of Uranus and Pluto can be extremely disruptive and even shocking in the obsession to implement radical changes and reforms. Fortunately, they are in a favorable trine aspect, but with midpoints to Saturn and Neptune, these radical changes can go either really badly, as in coercion, or really wonderful, as in new reforms supported by the consensus of the masses, which is guided by the principle of more power to the people. It probably depends on the attitude, behavior, motivation, and underlying agendas of world leaders who are leading this revolution in consciousness and practice. If the call of destiny is for unity over division, then words that uplift and empower will carry a lot of weight. With Neptune, people will buy into words if they lift up the spirit. They want that. They can be inspired to demand that of their leaders. And leaders who are in tune with their people will respond to that in kind. With Saturn, there is also the danger of buying into pessimism and fear, fighting against radical change, and wishing to go back to a past that is no longer possible. People will seek safety and protection rather than embark upon the unknown risk of going forward and working in unity with others that they do not yet trust. Whenever Saturn and Neptune are connected by aspect, it is always an issue of trust versus fear, 
which in turn results in taking chances versus paralysis, Uranus and Neptune respectively. Which candidate inspires with emotion? In reality, astrology, the planets and the cosmos, don't care. It says either candidate is capable of inciting either of these emotions. In the end, what matters will be the behavioral choices after the election. Yet, as I look at these moving parts of the cosmos, I think 2025 will be a powerful year. And it will determine whether or not the world moves towards harmony and the promise of a new era. It's possible, no matter who is elected. The conditions of the world are likely to unfold in such a way that events themselves, and the reactions to them, will shape the character of the leader or leaders, and, from this source, the future for years to come. Personally, I am very impressed with the potential for positive new direction and healthier relationships for humankind on all levels starting in 2025. Symbolically speaking, it's almost like a magic spell is being cast over the planet. The seasonal ingresses of the U.S. look very good for its leadership and its role in guiding the world into this new era, AIRA. America is a leader again. It's not falling apart, as I read these signs. So holy, hmm, I didn't expect to see this. But now I fully understand what legendary mundane astrologer Andre Barbeau saw a decade ago when he wrote the quote given at the beginning of this section on the longer-term thoughts. This interplanetary partnership will work for the best in a splendid launch of civilization. And that wraps up this week's newsletter beautifully. Except for one other quick announcement, if you would like to get the best price you could ever get on the print version of the 2025 forecast book, then go to MMACycles.com and go to the shop, and it's the first thing at the top. And that will be the cheapest it will be, and that pre-registration goes from now until the end of October. Thanks so much for listening. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Special edition on Fun Astrology tomorrow about the Sun-Vesta conjunction that happened this week. And I'll be back on Monday. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of the weekend. 